An OpenAI Japan team member says that GPT Next will be 100 times more powerful than what we have now. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off the day with a conversation that ripped around Twitter slash X yesterday. At the KDDI Summit, a representative from OpenAI Japan shared a slide that seemed to indicate that GPT Next, which was in quotes so isn't necessarily an official name, is set to be 100x more powerful than the GPT-4 era models we have now. The speaker was Tadao Nagasaki, who was announced back in April as the president of OpenAI Japan. Now, the way that Twitter slash X is taking this is that this 100x improvement on GPT Next is a specific real estimate rather than a demonstration of the exponentiality of AI and that GPT Next is the name of the model. I'm not totally sure that something isn't being lost in translation, It seems fairly possible to me that this slide was meant to just represent the exponential nature of AI growth, and that the slide which said GPT Next in 2024 and had it at 100x more powerful than the GPT-4 era was not in fact saying that the next model would be called GPT Next, that it would come out in 2024, or that it would be 100x more powerful, but instead was more meant as a demonstration, and then just got picked up and ripped around the internet as the internet does. Still, I think the excitement around it shows just how hungry for whatever comes beyond GPT-4 people are. And frankly, it was probably pretty dangerous to put this in a slide if it wasn't actually claiming that GPT Next was coming out this year and was going to be 100 times more powerful. One of the things we've been discussing a lot recently is Wall Street's relationship with AI. NVIDIA had a terrible day yesterday, wiping out $279 billion. That is the single biggest day of market cap loss in history. Over the last three sessions, since it reported earnings, it's now down 14%. Now, part of the specific reason for NVIDIA's losses was that the U.S. Department of Justice has apparently sent a subpoena to NVIDIA as part of a larger antitrust probe. Bloomberg characterizes the antitrust probe as escalating. As they put it, the DOJ, which has previously delivered questionnaires to companies, is now sending legally binding requests that oblige recipients to provide information. This takes the government a step closer to launching a formal complaint. The concern is that NVIDIA is making it harder to switch to other suppliers and penalize buyers that don't exclusively use its chips. Now, while some of the issues may be NVIDIA-specific, NVIDIA's place as a bellwether for the rest of the market means that these big losses have people looking at downstream implications as well. Again, Bloomberg writes, NVIDIA route has traders watching $100 share level amid vacuum. After earnings, there are a few potential catalysts on the horizon. Said Michael Kerbride, portfolio manager at Evercore Wealth, we're in a bit of a void right now. We're through with earnings and there's lots of economic data coming up this month. There's a lot of caution ahead of that. When you're in a trading vacuum, it becomes a shoot-first market that is very short-term in nature. And indeed, it does seem like broader uncertainty is coming home to roost as the main market force. The information writes, Just what we needed, a stock market chill to remind us that summer is over. Investors on Wall Street were dumping stocks left, right, and center on Tuesday after anemic manufacturing data reminded people of economic uncertainties they had put out of their minds. Tech stocks were a sea of red from the smallest to the biggest. Later, they write, Enthusiasm for both Microsoft and NVIDIA has been dampened by questions about the staying power of corporate spending on AI chips. Apple stock, meanwhile, has outperformed other big tech stocks in the past three months. Its rally may be premature, however, as Apple can't escape its own version of the AI question. The company next week unveils its newest iPhone, which means we're closer to seeing whether the addition of AI features can jumpstart stalled iPhone sales. There's no guarantee that consumers will be any more willing to spend for AI-powered services than businesses are. This should be an interesting fall. That was reflected in a conversation on CNBC with a portfolio manager who said, we like Apple for its sustained business model, not its AI story. Anyways, lots of interesting things coming up in the weeks ahead when it comes to the markets. Next story today, we have yet another acquihire non-acquisition thing. Amazon has hired the founders of the industrial robotics company Covariant. The company was last valued at $625 million back in April 2023, and once again, this same model of hiring the founders and licensing the startup's foundation models is the alternative to an actual acquisition. Only around a quarter of the company's employees are joining Amazon, all who will be joining the Fulfillment Technologies and Robotics team. I don't know how this trend ends, but I do know that if startups keep selling themselves and ditching out on the payday for half or more of the company, it's going to be a lot harder to hire people into startups. Lastly today, The Oprah AI special hasn't even come out, and already it's controversial. Ars Technica writes, Oprah's upcoming AI television special sparks outrage among tech critics. AI opponents say Gates, Altman, and others will guide Oprah through an AI sales pitch. The show is, of course, airing on September 12th, and, quote, aims to explore AI's impact on daily life. You can read the piece for yourself, but basically it shows, once again, just how fraught the discourse around AI is. That's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines edition. Next up, the main episode. 